for this video, I specifically wanted a bike because it's one of those things where you have to stand far away to get the shot because if you get too close, end game. This guy comes out of the woodwork, not just with one, but with two. Now the standard kit lens that comes with most cameras just isn't going to capture in high detail things at a distance So you're gonna run into a couple of problems a the lens will have a variable aperture Meaning when you zoom in you're gonna lose light and depth of field and B It'll still be too wide and you're gonna have to crop in post Which means you're gonna come out with grainy and blurry images that just aren't gonna look good or usable However, there is a right way and a wrong way to show you this lens mm. Show me this lens it's white, it's shiny, and... Show me this lens. Take a picture of that guy over there. There's no guy over there. Hi. The fuck? Now it's all good dishing specs and a bunch of nonsense paper reports, but then the questions become, how does the footage look and will it fit in my bag? So here's my plan. I'm gonna use the 15 to 35 to establish the location, and then every shot after that, I'm gonna use the 70 to 200 to keep up that adrenaline. And you know what, while we're here, I might as well use the FPV. You remember in the other video where I said I'd only used it twice? This seems like a good excuse. The lens hood on this thing is just a ridiculous size, and then the tripod mount is always just being really inconvenient, so you have to keep sliding it around. Anyway, that lens hood, there is a little special thing about the lens hood that probably is the reason why it's so big, and it's that little door on the side. So you can open it up and adjust your filters. It's a cool idea, but the lens hood doesn't really need to be that big. It just becomes a nuisance. You see, this is one of those kinds of shoots where you are only interested in the rider. You're not bothered about the scenery, so why not just dial in on the rider and that's exactly what we're going to do with the 70 to 200 also to answer the question does it fit in my bag this is the pm everyday bag and i have a battery slot here just slots in like that it fits in your bag perfect That was one of the scariest moments I have ever had flying a drone. Look at this thing, it's covered in grass. I literally, oh mate, I must, I'm so bad at flying drones. <laughs> Let's take a quick second to just compare the wide angle versus the tie. I mean, yeah, it's cool. It's still kind of cool, but it's not anywhere near as cool as this. I mean, that's, that is sick. I mean, just look at the dirt coming up off the bike tire. All the tires are in motion, the mud underneath the mud flap, and in full detail, the helmet and the rider, his boots are oh, sick. You see, if you stick to using wide angle lenses because you're scared of missing the big picture, you're gonna end up missing the tiny details. And those tiny details can tell an entirely new story in itself. This might confuse you. Okay, so you can still shoot wide on this lens. Now let me explain. Just because you can zoom in doesn't necessarily mean you have to fill the frame. You can still shoot wide on a 70 to 200, and this is a perfect example. Just look at how much room this photo has to breathe. All the dust, the dirt kicking up, he's centered up. He's centered off to the right. What a no, that makes no sense. He's positioned to the he's not even in the right, he's on the left. He's positioned to the left. That gives all the breathing room for that dust. And then it just it just ah, oh, it's just a sick photo. And you can't even deny it. Again, take this image for example. It still isolates the subject perfectly perfectly so that you know that that's what you're supposed to look at but you've still got a nice background and environment to work with so you can put the pieces together also when he did this i genuinely thought it was going to go over my head madman 
See, I know with this lens, I can capture literally any story and deliver emotion. There's a reason why this is literally one of the only two lenses I own. And that's because the 15 to 35 is great for laying a foundation for the 70 to 200 to build on. And what I mean by that is that the 15 to 35 builds the story and the 70 to 200 gets those tiny details and emotions that really express how you feel as a content creator. The 70 to 200 is an excuse for you to express. You see, this video wasn't to sell you a lens, it was to prove to you why it's my favourite lens. However, if you do want one, there is a link in the description. And if you want to see why the RF 15-35 to is a homage to vlogs, you can watch that video here. Silly.